This video will show you how to set up and use vendor specific pricing in Sage Business Vision. Vendor specific pricing is a feature used to control prices per vendor and inventory items. The cost prices that set up become default prices on the purchase order which can still be changed before the PO is issued. Unlike customer specific pricing, vendor specific pricing does not require the installation of custom pack. There are three ways to access vendor specific pricing. The first way is under the vendor module and under the specific vendor you can click on the specific prices tab. Second way is by going onto the inventory module and clicking on the part number itself and going to the vendor pricing. And the third way is by clicking underneath utilities, vendor specific pricing. To use this feature, users need to have access to both the inventory and vendor modules. They must also have rights to view and change vendor specific prices and cost prices set in the user details window. Go to user details, we can check the access underneath vendor. Under options, we have maintain vendor specific pricing and we also have view vendor specific pricing. Let's go back under vendor details, under the vendor specific price. Let's take a look at the vendor specific price again. We're going to take a look at what happens when we create a purchase order for this vendor. You can see here that the vendor references this part as L3-589902. The cost price of 179.33. Let's change this price actually to 170. We see that once changing the cost price, it changes the variance percentage compared to the current cost price. Let's update the cost price at time of receipt. Let's check that off and let's hit save. And let's see what happens when we create a purchase order now for the CD204. Let's go to purchase order module and pick Amtron. We'll see that the price of 170 does show, and there is a green symbol directly underneath the address tab. That is the information button, and we see that it is a green C, which tells us that vendor pricing is in effect. So, if we accept that, and we'll simply hit save, we'll issue the purchase order. Yes. Let's take a look at the vendor specific pricing again. And we've noticed here that we have checked off a price called update cost price at time of receipt. Let's close this for now. Let's jump back to the purchase order module and let's see actually what happens. With this purchase order, we see here that we've specified 170 as the unit price. Let's say the vendor gives us a deal and gives us this item at a price of let's say 169. We'll save. We'll say yes to record an invoice. And let's simply close the PO. Let's close out vendor details. We can refresh and double click on the C204. And we can see here that it is now at a cost price of 169. This is because we have allowed the update cost price at time of receipt and the price changed from the original 170 to a different amount. Let's go back under the vendor switch pricing under the quantity breaks tab. In the quantity breaks we can establish quantity breaks like we would do with a customer. In this case here Let's see what happens when we establish quantity breaks for this vendor specific pricing. Let's put five. 
at 165 and let's put 10 at 155. Let's hit save and let's create a purchase order. Let's pick Amtron again. We'll pick the CD Tool 4. Okay, we can see here that 169 immediately appears because it is the default vendor specific price, but we've established quantity breaks. So, how would this work now? So, we notice that you put 1 at below anything be below 5 was 169. So, let's see if we had, let's say, 3. It's still 169. If we reach the minimum quantity of 5, for example, we now have 165. Okay, we change that further to 10 or even 11, we'll now see that we have a 155 price in the unit price. So let's save this, issue it, and let's take a look at the purchase order again. We see on the purchase order that it is a CD204, but what is printed is actually the L3 589902. This is because we've established that as the vendor part under the vendor strict price. If we did not have that field populated, it would print CD 204 in here. Let's close this for now and let's go back to the purchase order and let's receive, let's say they gave us a deal here for 152 and we receive 11. Save and let's record a vendor invoice and let's close the purchase order. After closing, let's take a look at the vendor split price. Let's go back to the Amtron again. Let's refresh. Let's go into that vendor split price. Let's go to the quantity breaks. We can now see here that the price has now changed to 152 from 155. This is because that one of the previous cost prices, we can see that the last purchase order, we purchased it at 152. One important thing to note is that quantity breaks for vendor specific pricing is unavailable for Sage Business Vision Limited Edition and Sage Business Vision Small Business Edition. Business Vision has the feature of copying vendor specific pricing from one vendor to another. Let's take a look how that is accomplished. Let's close this down and let's go to a vendor which does not have vendor specific pricing. Let's go to Bell for example. This vendor has no vendor specific pricing at all. Let's hit the copy button under the specific pricing tab. Underneath there it says we want to copy from a vendor. So let's pick Amtron since we know we were working with them just earlier. And we have the options here of copy cost price, quantity breaks, start end dates. Let's let's leave all those and let's hit OK. Copying existing prices will override all the target vendor prices. Are you sure you wish to continue? We'll click yes and we now see that for Bell we have all the Venezuelan pricing from Amtron including the quantity of breaks. Okay. A few things to keep in mind with the copy function is that you cannot copy between vendors who have different currencies. All items from the source vendor copy to the target vendor if an item already exists in the target vendor, the system overrides the settings with the source vendors. If an item already exists in the target vendor, it remains. Let's use Bell for now. And let's change this vendor part number to, let's say, Bell CD204D. Let's now see if we can establish a date for the price. Let's put the 16th and we'll put on the 18th or 19th actually. 
let's see what happens with this vendor now. Let's hit save. Let's go to purchase order. Bell, and we'll see Z204, and it immediately comes up with a 169 price. Let's do a new purchase order, and let's change the order date from the 17th to something that's outside the range of the start and end date. Let's go for the 20th, since we know the cutoff date was the 19th. Let's pick Amtron again, or Bell for that matter. And let's pick the CD204. We'll see here that we are not given the Venice pricing of 169. We're outside the date range. If we delete this line item and let's modify the dates back to a date that is within the range, you'll now see that Venice Street pricing is in effect. Let's close. No. There are a couple other ways to get into the vendor story pricing as well. One other way is going to inventory and picking the CD 204 and we can see under the vendor pricing that we have all the vendors that have vendor story pricing for this product. Again, we could double click or you can click the edit button to modify the vendor story pricing. You will notice here that in this inventory module there is no copy feature since this is only in the vendor specific price tab of the vendor module. The other way we can access this if you go to utilities and vendor specific price. With this here we have all the vendor specific prices for all products, all vendors. You can click on the toggle view button to toggle between vendor views and part number views. From here, we can also edit, we can delete, create new vendor stock prices, and scroll to different windows. Let's go back to Bell's CD204. And with this one, let's enable this option here, which says automatically delete price after expiry. Let's close and save. Take another quick look. Bell start the 16th and at 19th automatic delete prices. So let's see if we can log on as of the 20th. Let's go underneath Bell under specific prices, we now see that the CD204 is no longer there. That's because we've allowed that vendor specific price to be deleted after the range of the start and end date. Let's close vendor details and let's go back to inventory. I've created a new item here called an Apple. So let's see how the minimum quantity works in regards to vendor specific pricing. I have a minimum order quantity of 100 let's set my reorder point let's say 50 I have no quantities we'll go to the vendor pricing we'll save that first and we'll go to vendor pricing and let's click on the new button and let's establish a vendor let's call it um, chip I'll leave the vendor part blank cost price I'll put 0.22 and minimum quantity let's let's go for um, Let's go for 200. I'll hit save. I'll close. So, we've established here for chip. For this product, this Apple, we have a minimum order quantity of 200 at a cost price of 22 cents. Let's close and let's go back to the details here. There's no quantities. We require at least 50 
the minimum order quantity is 100. Let's see how this works. Let's close. Let's go to edit. Let's go underneath purchase order and auto generate purchase order. And let's go underneath select from inventory. And let's start at part apple. And at apple. I'm going to uncheck items on back order since they were quantities of zero. And I'm going to use reorder point to calculate requirements. Let's see what happens here. Let's hit OK. And I get the red apple here. Minimum order of 100. All right. We haven't set this vendor up as the preferred vendor. So let's hit OK. Let's close without saving. Let's go back to the part number again for Apple. And we'll go to the Info tab and we'll set Chip as the preferred vendor this time. Close. Let's go to do the same thing. Edit. Purchase order. Auto generate purchase order. And we'll go underneath from inventory. Apple. And use reorder point to calculate. We'll hit OK. And now we see that the item is now 200. This is because we've established the minimum quantity ordered for chip as 200. We've set this vendor as the preferred vendor. So it negotiates between the inventory's minimum quantity and the vendor's prices order quantity. The order quantity for the vendor specific price takes precedence. So if we hit OK and we generate purchase order. The report comes up showing that we've ordered the red apple, order quantity is 200, and purchase order number is 300302. If we close this, and let's close the auto generate, go back to the purchase order module, and we can see now, if we bring up that purchase order, we are ready to issue this purchase order for the vendor chip and the price of 22 cents or a quantity is 200 and vendor specific pricing is in effect. This concludes this video on how to set up and use vendor specific pricing in Sage Business Vision.